I want to show you how to bind off at both the beginning and the end of a row as I have on this baby surprise jacket. You see that there is the same amount of red on both sides of the neck opening. What am I talking about? Well, in knitting instructions, you are usually asked to bind off at the beginning of the row and then work across, all the way across. At the end of the row, you turn and then bind off at the beginning of the wrong side row, which of course means that these stitches will be one row taller than these stitches. On a lot of projects it doesn't matter because all of this will get lost in a seam allowance and you won't see it, but on some projects you will see it and particularly if you are working in narrow stripes it will be noticeable. So what can you do about it? We shall start by binding off five stitches and five. Now I will work across and I will stop knitting when I have one more stitch left than what I mean to bind off. So in this case I will stop knitting when I have six stitches left at the end of the row. And I have six. Now I will put my work on the table and stretch my yarn out to form the numeral four. The horizontal will become a trapped yarn. I will regard this as if it were the second color that I'm carrying and trapping in stranded ferrule color knitting. And I will work with the working yarn that's attached to the project. And here's what that looks like. So there's the first stitch and make it just a hair looser for what we're doing here. The second stitch I need to trap, so I enter as if I'm going to knit. I duck my right needle tip underneath the yarn I'm trapping and then I create my stitch with my working yarn. And remember to make it just a little looser for what we're doing. So the third stitch is a regular stitch. Again, the right needle tip is above the yarn we're trapping. The fourth stitch is a trap, so the right needle tip needs to go below. And here's the fifth and the final one. The right needle tip underneath the yarn I'm trapping and then bringing just the working yarn through that stitch. So there I am at the end of the row. I turn the work and now if you're wondering why I did that, if I had just bound off my working yarn would be over here and I need it to be over here. So by doing this trapping maneuver my working yarn is where I need it to be. You're no doubt noticing there's excess over here but I can get rid of that pretty easily by just tugging gently if I've done this maneuver correctly with the trap, then that excess yarn is just trapped and runs across the back nicely. And now I can bind off without working the stitches. So two stitches onto the right needle and then just pull one over the other, which is why it helped if you worked them just a teensy bit loose you have enough for binding them off. And in this case, because I'm going to resume knitting rather than purling, because this is garter stitch, I'm going to move this yarn to the back of my work so it's ready to be knit. So I do that before the last stitch is bound off. So I've bound off the last stitch. Now I will put this stitch back on the left needle because I haven't worked it yet. And now I continue in pattern, which in this case is garter stitch. And there I am at the end of the row. I will turn the work so you can see the right side. And there you are, binding off at both the beginning and the end of the row 
So they are the same height and they match.